And we're going to get ready for the word. Amen. Let me, let me get my water. All right, before we begin, is, uh, let me see. Brother Derek Strickland, did he go to the back? Went to the back? Oh, okay. Pastor, I get you to do it from the beginning. Before we begin, I want to pass something out. Pass my hundred dollar bill. Uh huh. 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 Uh Get some Snickers. I want to make sure everybody gets some Snickers. Well, I see smiles on everybody's face. They looking like, hey, this this the ministry right here. We can go home and go home, Pastor. <laughs> this this Snicker for the minister to me right now. <laughs> we got we got two over here. We want everybody to get a Snickers. Huh? It's not three o'clock. You right. You right. If everybody got a Snickers, say, I got one. I got one. I got one. Everybody good? Did anybody? Let me, let me, let me get me one, too. I'm going to pray. Let me make sure I get me one. There we go. There we go. Everybody got one? Good. All right. Miss Shadrika, can you play that video for me? We're going to watch this. This one 30 seconds. I'm dying back here. It's on. Can't you feel it? Can you feel that? Oh. Jeff, eat a Snickers, please. Why? Every time you get hungry, you turn into a diva. Just eat it so you can all coexist. Turn into a diva. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. Okay. Thank you. I'm better? Better. Will you get your knees out of the back of my seat? Oh. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Yeah, but Amen, amen. Let's go to the word. Colossians 1, 1 through 8. We're going to come back to that. Our main scripture. If you have your Bibles or your phones, Colossians, the first chapter. The first through the eighth verse. And we have it here on the screen as well. And I'm reading from the message version. And it says this, I, Paul, have been sent on special assignment by Christ. As a part of God's master plan, together with my friend Timothy, I greet the, I greet the Christians and Star Wars followers of Christ who live in Coloss or Colossians. May everything good from God our Father be yours. Our prayers for you are always spilling over into thanksgiving. We can't quit thanking God our Father and Jesus our Messiah for you. We keep getting good reports on your steady faith in Christ, our Jesus, and the love you continuously extend to all Christians. The lines of purpose in your lives never grow slack. Tightly tied as they are to your future in heaven. Kept taught by hope the message is as true among you today as when you first heard it. It doesn't diminish or weaken over time. It's the same all over the world. The message. Somebody say the message. The message. Bears fruit and gets larger and stronger. Just as it has in you. From the very first day you heard and recognized the truth or what God is doing, you've been hungry for more. Somebody hold your snippers up. Look at the person next to you and say, hungry? hungry. Why, wait? Why wait? Say it again. Say, hungry? hungry. Why, wait? Why wait? See, there's a, there's a certain thing that happen in the natural once somebody get hungry. Yeah. You, yeah. We do know that there are certain side effects to hunger pains, all right? Yeah. So, so when one gets hungry, you can begin to experience nausea or headaches. Yeah. You get a feeling of emptiness in the stomach. And, and, and Lord knows we all can get easily agitated and angry yeah. when we're hungry, yeah. when you're ready for something, amen? So I believe we're in a season right now where a lot of people in the body of Christ, they're having the side effects of hunger pain, Shandrika. Not for natural food, but they're hungry for everything that God has for them, Pastor. They're hungry for greater. They're tired of the norm. The, the conferences and the revivals, they're all good, but I want more of God in this season right now. That's good stuff. That's right. That's good stuff, bro. That's good 
good. We can get a good message on YouTube. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't gotta come here to hear me to get a good. We can get that online. But people are ready for more. So if you're hungry, why wait? This is the season to take action. Somebody say take action. take action. This is the season to take action. Now growing up, when we was having a big family dinner, and mommy and grandma and they would be cooking that meal, and we would be hungry, and we go in the kitchen just begging them just to give us a little snack, pastor. Give us a little taste because we so hungry, right? And, and, and they would tell us, they would say, no, 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 not just yet. Just wait for the main meal. Just wait for the main meal because if we gave you just a little something small to eat right now or a little snack or a little snack bite or something, it can have the potential to cause you to get halfway full and you will not fully enjoy what I really have for you later on down the road. And there are some of us, we've been praying for so long. We've been fasting for so long. We've been faithful for so long. And we're asking God, God, just give me a little taste of what it is you have for me. And God says, I can't give you a taste right now for your journey. And although you're getting weary, I'm going to give you strength. Because for some of you, if I give you just a taste of what I have, it will cause you to get full and you won't really enjoy what I really have for you later on. Right, right, right. God wants you to fully enjoy what he has for you. Because even at restaurants, if you are not careful, you can get full of appetizers and put your main meal down the road for later. So you have to understand, God says, I don't want you to get full just off a of preview of what I have, off of an appetizer what I have for you. But I want you to enjoy everything that I got. I don't want, there cannot be no delays in your destiny in this season. God wants us to always have this pursuit of him, man, to always stay hungry for greater. Amen. So as we go into 2018, the pastor been talking about this is the year of excellence. And Prophet Trish just got through saying how we need to push. And I'm telling you, it's time to take action. Right. We're talking about hungry. Why wait? You don't need nobody's permission for you to start walking in your destiny. Amen. You don't need nobody's approval. My brother-in-law, Anthony Andrew, said all the time, you don't need nobody to co-sign your purpose and what God has told you to do. There shouldn't be no delaying or no waiting. If you know what God has called you to do, step out and take action. Say take action. Take action. So the first thing I want to talk about, the first thing that we need to be hungry for is God's presence. That's awesome. Because yes, without his presence, nothing else will fall into place. Amen? That's right. That's right. We need to be hungry for God's presence. Now, I remember back when I was in high school and you know, had my high, had my little high school sweetheart, and you know, we first started talking, and you know, back then we called it boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't know if they call it the same today, <laughs> but a friend, just yeah, they call it just friend or baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know how it was when you was back in high school, had your had your high school sweetheart, might have been your first girlfriend or whatnot, and 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 y'all first started going out and and talking or whatnot, and as soon as school would be over with. Every day you ran home and you ran straight to the phone. Right. And mom would tell you, boy, do your homework, do that, do that, do that. But and you do all that because you're so focused and you're you're in a hurry because you're trying to get to the phone just so you can call your girlfriend. Just so y'all can get on the phone and hold. And hold. Come on, y'all know how it was. You, you be on the phone three, four hours that pass, and y'all about halfway asleep, and you about snoring already, and you say, you, you, you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. Five minutes go by, don't nobody say anything, and, and you still say, you, you, what you doing, nothing? What you doing, nothing? <laughs> Five minutes, you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. I'm talking about you would. It, it was nothing that can get you off of that phone. And, and back then, you know, you can have people to beep in on you. And you know, mama and them, they come and ask you, boy, did I get a phone call? No, ma'am, nobody did beep in, nobody did beep in. <laughs> All because you wanted to stay on that phone and to be in the presence of the one that you had that love for. Amen. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about daddy can come and tell me, boy, boy, they cut the grass. I wouldn't hang up. Hey, 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 sister, can you hold on real quick? I'll be right back. You go for 30 minutes, come back, they still on the phone waiting for you. Because y'all wanted each other presence just that bad. Yeah. In this season, that's how we need to be with God. Amen. That's right. That's right. We need to have a passion and a desire 
for God's presence because I'm reminded when God was leading the children of Israel, he said, follow behind the ark. Follow behind my presence because you're going to a place you've never been before. And as God get ready to usher us into a new season, we got to make sure we stay behind the presence. Amen? And to stay in the presence. The first point I want to tell you when it comes to God's presence is that we no longer need a priest, but you just need a pursuit. We no longer need a priest, you just need a pursuit. Now I wanna do a quick illustration real fast, because I really want y'all to grasp what I'm about to um, show you guys real quick about how important you are to God. And, and, and the things God did, just, just the things that God sacrificed just so you can be in his presence, amen? So, back in the Old Testament, everybody, everybody couldn't just go into God's presence. That's right. Back in the Old Testament, God instructed them to build a temple. And in the temple, there was three parts of the temple. You had the outer court. You had the holy place, or called the, uh, the inner court, and then you had the holies of holies. And in the holy of holies is where the Ark of the Covenant was, and that's where God's abiding presence was. It was in the Ark of the Covenant, in the holy of holies, behind the veil. Right. But everybody couldn't just go into the presence of God, or they would die. So God, he assigned one person that was able to go into the, uh, his presence in the holy of holies, once a year on the Day of Atonement, and that was the high priest. Mm -hmm. So only the high priest could go into God's presence and interact with him. So if I can give you an example, we would say this is the temple, right? This part here in the red is the outer court. This is where they had the altar, and this is where the, uh, the sacrifice happened, and where the priest would go and wash himself. So in the outer court, the priest would, would do the sacrifice with the animal, carry the blood, wash himself, and then he would move on into the holy place or the inner court, which would be here, right here in this area, right here. And in the inner court, you had the lampstand, you had the candlesticks, and you had the table of showbread. And that's where the priest would perform the rituals. And once he got done with the rituals, you had the outer court, the holy place, but what separated the holy place from the holies of holies, it was a veil. Right. It was a curtain. And only the high priest was able to go beyond the veil and beyond the curtain into God's presence. Brother Shrieking, can you get the lights for me back there? This thing gonna heat up in a minute. In, in a minute. I just need you to stay with me. So, follow me back here. So this is the holy place, right? The inner court. Yeah. Once the priest had the blood, I'm feeling this thing already, and he was ready to go behind the veil. See, nobody could, everybody just couldn't come behind this plate right here. It was the Ark of the Covenant, which had God's presence. So once he was ready to go in, they said, what, was, what, they said, what would happen was, was that the priest would have a rope tied around his leg. Yeah with bells on it. And what this signified was, as the priest walked, you would hear the bells moving. So once the priest went behind the curtain, if them jokers heard the bells stop, that mean the priest dropped dead because he was unclean and he was contaminated to go into the presence of God. God required everybody to be clean, to get up, wash away all the sins. So they had, they had the rope tied around the priest's leg with the veils. So once the priest was ready to go behind the veil, he would go into the holies of holies, the place where God dwells. And he would go and do the blood on top of the Ark of the Covenant, and they still hearing the bells. And once he did that, it would account for the people's sin, and God would be atoning for their, king, uh, for their sins. But once the bells stop, if the bells ever stop behind the veil, that means the priest was not clean, and uh, they dragged them on out because nobody could go back there. That's why they tied the rope to him. They're like, we ain't going back there. We put this rope around you. You drop dead. We just going to drag you out of there. But now, Lord God Almighty, oh because we have a high priest who can be touched with the infirmities, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. The Bible now says Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Right. 
And the Bible says he's went into the heavenly places once and for all, Brother Isaiah. And now because Jesus went into the most holy of holies as the ultimate sacrifice, when he said it was finished on the cross, the Bible said the veil ripped from the top to the bottom. So once Jesus said it was finished, this is what happened right here. Come on now. The curtains opened up. And it all became accessible to everybody. So now, no longer was it just the priest's responsibility or had access. Everybody had access to the presence of God. Everybody had access to what was then in the Ark of the Covenant. Everybody now can go to God before themselves, boldly, before the throne of grace. That's why it says we no longer need a high priest. You're able to walk before God yourself. So whenever you got a situation going on, Pastor, you don't got to go through nobody else. You can drop on your knees and say, oh, Father, I cry out to you. I need you in this hour. You now have access to the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Look what it says in Ephesians 2, 16 through 18. Somebody says it's all about his presence. We want to do a, 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 a lot of teaching today. Normally, you know, we, we, we hyped and I'm fired up, and we're going to get to that. But I want to really just show you what God did. It says, Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of hostility. Christ came and preached peace to you outsiders and peace to us insiders. He treated us as equals and so made us equals. Through him, talking about Christ, we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. That's right. Now that is exciting right there. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 19 through 21. So friends, because of what Christ done, we can now, without hesitation, Walk right up to God and to the holy place. This thing get me excited. I don't know about it. When you really think about this thing, we said we can without hesitation walk right up to God and to the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. And what I'm trying to tell you today is now, we don't need anybody to act on our behalf. God said, I want to have such a relationship with you that I'm going to give everybody equal access to me. Now, the question is, how bad do you want it? How deep is your passion for God? How deep is your passion for God? That is exciting because he says that we can now come boldly before him. You see, when you live in God's presence, you have access to everything you need. See, because my girls live in my house, whatever they need to live, they come to me to follow. Because they're living in my presence. Everybody outside my house don't have that access, Pastor. But because my girls live in my presence, they stay in my presence. Right, right. When, when, when they come to me and say, Daddy, I'm hungry, I can, I can send them to that part of my house where the food is. Go and get you some out the refrigerator. Yeah. When they say, Daddy, I just want a snack, go and go to the pantry real quick. Daddy, I need a towel. Go and go to the closet real quick. Whatever they need from their father, because they're in my presence, they can freely walk and go get what they need. What am I trying to say? There are going to be seasons where you're going to say, Father, I need strength right now. And God say, go into that place in me where you can draw strength. Lord, I need joy right now. Go into that place in me where you can draw joy. Lord, I need a financial blessing right now. Go into that place in me where you can draw out provision. All because you now have that access. Somebody say access, access. Access. You now have that access. The second point I want to make is that when we go into God's presence and you're pursuing God's presence, you have to be ready for things that God will tell you and what he will share with you. Because God's presence will expose what you need to eliminate. That's good. 
His presence will expose what you need to eliminate. Let's go to John chapter 3, 19 through 21. Look what it says here. This is the crisis we're in. God light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness. They went for the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusion, they hate God light and won't come near it, fearing a what? A painful exposure. Have you ever been in, went to a church service or a conference or whatnot and it felt like the preacher was talking directly to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. She said every Sunday. <laughs> and, 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 and you felt like that he was just all up in your Kool-Aid, just, just talking about everything you know you need to work on. Yeah. You, you go to a conference and a prophet is there and they, they, get, they got hundreds of people in the crowd, but they looking at you the whole time and you trying not to make eye contact because you know you don't want to get called. All right. So the prophet calls you up and they begin to say what God is ready to do in your life. But then it also begins to tell you some things you need to fix in your life. God is ready to do this and do that. But I see a little bit of unforgiveness in you. God wants you to get that done. I see a little bit of bitter from your past. I see a little bit of anger at your mate right now. All because when you're in the presence of God, he will expose what you need to eliminate because exposure is a prerequisite for elevation. Come on, That's good. That's good stuff. Anybody ready to get elevated? Yes, sir. Can you handle the exposure? Because God's presence, it would challenge your character. And he will expose certain things. Not that he's trying to embarrass you. But in order for you to be promoted, you have to be molded. Amen? Right. Come on, brother. The Bible says God took the children of Israel through the wilderness to test what was in their hearts. That's right. On their way to their promise, he took them through this route. He took them through this way so he can see and expose what was in their hearts. How many of you can... Handle God testing your heart right now. Amen. Who ready to go to the next level? Mm. Who ready for a new season? Man. Who ready for a new life? Yeah. What do you do when God says, I see that you're ready and I'm ready for you to be ready. But now I'm going to take you through a season where I got to test everything about you. I know you got a little trouble with some patience right now. So I'm going to say, everybody in your life that's going to get on your nerves. You got to be ready to get tested and exposed. That's right. That's right. Because God does not need you taking any baggage in your destiny. Oh, that's, good, that's right. Amen. Somebody say, get rid of the baggage. Get rid of the baggage. Come on, come on. I'm in the scriptures. Come on, I know I'm in the scriptures. Every yeah. sin that easily beset every, you. Every way. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of the baggage. But one thing about God, not only do will, will he expose you and the things you need to work on, but he will also expose people. Woo! He will also expose people. Somebody say, show me in the word. Let's talk about my brother Aiken. <laughs> we know the story of Aiken, don't we? Yeah. Exposure is a prerequisite before elevation, right? So the children of Israel, they've been going and walking in and achieving everything God has for their pastor. They've been going and fighting these battles, and they've been winning, piling up victories. The Bible says they had every nation around them scared and petrified because God was with that nation. But in one specific battle, God gave them instructions. When you go and you win this battle and you achieve this victory, mother, he told them, don't touch of the accursed things. That's right. But there's a brother named Achan. In the midst of going into battle, he seen the accursed things and he got a little antsy. And, and the, the gold and, and the jewelry and all that looked good to him. So he said, ain't nobody going to see me. He took the accursed things and then went and hid them in his tent. Mm -hmm. Thinking everything was all good. So now when it comes time for the children of Israel to go to their next battle, they got a little swaggy. Mm -hmm. Children of Israel was a little confident. Right. Because they've been winning so many battles, God been with us. Surely we can't lose. They said, we're going to go up to the battle of Ai, and we ain't even going to take our whole army. <laughs> this is just a small little town. 
We don't even got to take all our people. We just going to send just a few men. And the Bible says they went up to the battle of Ai, and the men at Ai ran them jokers all the way back to where the children of Israel was kept in it. And Joshua didn't know what was going on. He fell before God. God, what has happened? You've been with us all this time. What has went wrong? And God says there is contamination in the camp. And there are so many people in the body of Christ, they're successful, but they're walking around contaminated. Oh. You got contaminated success. Yeah, you got the mega ministry, but you're sleeping with the praise and worship director. Right. Oh, it's going to get hot in here today. You know I keep it real, raw, and relevant. That's right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You got a 30,000-member church, but you're stealing from the tithes and offering bucket. My, my, my. You got a thriving ministry, but your senior pastor got a husband. Woo! What? <laughs> <laughs> My God, today. Contaminated success. That's right. My God. And God told Aiken, you need to expose somebody. Because as long as this is going on, you will not continue to get elevated. You would not continue, you told Joshua, you would not continue to experience my blessing right. and the victories. Right. So uh, Joshua went and called Aiken out, went through the process what God told him, and they exposed the very thing that had to get eliminated. Right. Exposure is a prerequisite for elevation. I'm reminded of Gideon. God told Gideon, I want you to go and fulfill this mission. But he told Gideon, you had too many people with you. Too many. And God took them through a series of actions that would expose everybody that wasn't fit to walk in the blessing with him. What do you do when you, you're going to your next level and God begins to tell you, I got to shrink your circle. Wow. I need you to decrease some people in your life. Because they're not fit to walk with you in this season that I'm taking you to. Not that anything wrong with them, right. but it's that you cannot have a distraction on your road to right. destiny. Right. right now, they're in a place where they will only be a distraction. Mm -hmm. God, so God removes some people so he can usher you in purpose. What do you do when God lets you know, I'm about to call some betrayals in your life? What do you do when God says, prepare for the rejection? Prepare for them talking about you. Prepare for the people to leave you. Prepare for the people not to believe in your vision. Because he's exposing the things and the people that can't go with you to where he want to go with you. Now on the flip side of exposure, this has a double fold meaning. Exposure is a prerequisite for elevation, right? Amen. Let's look at Joseph. This is the good side of exposure. <laughs> you have to understand what Prophetess Trish was saying about motivation a moment. There are things and gifts within you that God expects you to push out. Amen? Amen. And we got a lot of people in the body of Christ that never became hoarders. Yeah. Come on, y'all know the show hoarders, right? Yeah. Everybody got the house and the house is fully cluttered. Don't want to release nothing. They just want to hold on to it. We got a lot of spiritual hoarders in here. But they got tons of talents, tons of gifts, but they refuse to release them. So now they're hoarding everything that God has for them. But we look at Joseph. And Joseph, he didn't hoard his gift. He had the gift of interpretation. So we know the story, Joseph got sold into slavery, he did with the Potiphar's house, and then he got put into the prison. And now that he was in prison, the same gift that God put within Joseph was the same thing that got him before the presence of Pharaoh. Now just imagine if Joseph would have never exposed the gift that was within him. Imagine if he was uh, selfish and petty in prison, didn't want to interpret the dreams from the cup baker and the cup barrel and the baker and the cup barrel. He would have never got to Pharaoh. But because he released what was in him, the Bible says two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. And it wasn't nobody that could interpret it. And the same man that Joseph ministered to two years earlier, they said, I'm reminded of a man. See, sometimes, so for some of you in this season, God is going to start having people remind themselves of who you are. Amen, amen. 
God has not forgotten about you. And they told Pharaoh, I know a man that can interpret what it is you need. I know a man that can give you exactly what it is you need. And Pharaoh said, bring him before my presence right now. And it was Joseph's gift, him exposing his gift, that got him before Pharaoh. I'm here to tell you that if you don't release and expose what it is you have within you, you would never reach the elevated place that God has for you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Somebody say, expose it. Expose it. So number one, we no longer need a, a priest. We just need a pursuit, have a passion for God. Number two, when you go into God's presence and you live in his presence, he's going to expose what you need to eliminate. He's going to challenge your character. He's going to challenge the people you have, the, uh, challenge you with the people you have in your life. The third point is this. God's presence requires covenant behavior, not common behavior. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 6, 1 through 7. I got one more point and we'll be out of here. This is dealing with David carrying the ark back to uh, Jerusalem. It says, David must have to pick up the troops of Israel, 30 divisions of them, together with his soldiers. David headed for Bala to recover the chest of God, or the Ark of the Covenant, which was called by the name God of the Angel Armies, who was enthroned over the pair of angels on the chest. They placed the chest of God on a brand new ox cart and removed it from Abinadab's house on the hill. Uzzah and Ohio, Abinadab's son, were driving a new cart loaded with the chest of God, Ohio in the lead, and Uzzah alongside the chest. David and the whole company of Israel was in a parade, singing at the top of their lungs and playing mandolins, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nathan, the oxen stumbled, so Uzzah reached out and grabbed the chest of God. God blazed in anger against Uzzah and struck him hard. Why? Because he had profaned the chest. Uzzah died on the spot right alongside the chest. That word right there where it says he had profaned, that word profane means disrespect. It means irreverence. So it would say Uzzah, God blazed my anger against Uzzah and struck him hard because he disrespected the Ark of the Covenant or disrespected the presence of God. You have to understand, you have to have covenant behavior, not coming behavior when you go into God's presence. Too many of us have not coming with God. Amen. I tell my wife all the time, I say, babe, we said to death do us part. I say, you got to put up with me, and I got to put up with you. I say, at all costs, and she'll tell you one of my number one rules, at all costs, all costs. let's not get coming with one another. That's good, that's good. That's good. Let's, let's, don't, 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 when, when I come in and go from a long day of work, pastor, don't just look at me and just roll your eyes and don't say nothing. <laughs> Let me hear a hey, babe, or can I get a hug or, or a kiss on a jaw or something? You know what I mean? If I, told, if, if I see you having a hard day, babe, let me, let me just come and give you a foot massage and, and rub your back or something. Or, or let me cook dinner for you tonight. I know you had a long day. Let me do the laundry for you. I say, let's not get coming with one another. Because when you get coming, if you get, and this is what I'm married, folks, if the, the day you decide to get coming with your spouse consistently, consistently. you open the door for the enemy to come in. That's right. That's, That's right. Because right. I guarantee you got at least five people waiting on your spouse to become a free agent. <laughs> Don't get coming. Don't get coming. I told him, I said, I said, man, we can't look at each other as roommates. Look at each other as royalty. Right. Right. Yeah. That's good stuff. When I come in, hey queen, what's up? And I still try to, I still try to put my little swag on the toothpaste that walk in when I walk in the house. What's up, queen? <laughs> <laughs> you had a good day today. Try to talk all deep, you know what I mean? You got to get the deep voice when you're talking to the wife now. You just can't believe, hey, babe. Yeah, 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 what's up, queen? Uh, that's right. Well, you about to go horse trying to talk so deep. <laughs> what's up, what's up, queen? Uh, you all right today, babe? How can I serve you today? That's right, that's right. That's right. 
And she just be laughing at me, but I do that because I want to keep my place right. in a position of not getting right. common with her. That's right. And we have to do the same thing with God. We have to understand that although, as I told you earlier in the first part, we all got access. He God says, come boldly. Come walk up to me. Come, I'm your father. You my son and daughter. Come to me. But we have to remain in a place where we just don't get coming. Because too many people have lost the reverence from God. Even during my private prayer time when I'm at the house, I still fall on my knees. That's right. And I fall on my face and I say, oh, Lord, you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You're the first thing. You're the last. You are he who was and is and is to come. There's still, you have to have that reverence and that respect for him. Too many people have become coming with God. We got too many Christians that are nothing but saved concubines. Mm -hmm. Woo! Let's die today. Can I break it down, brother? Can I break it down, mother? Come on, break it down. God has called us to be the bride of Christ, right? Mm. Right. We're the bride. We're the wife. Right. Main chief. But there's too many people in the body of Christ, they want to live a life as a concubine. Mm -hmm. they, they, they want the pleasures of God. But don't want the commitment and the covenant, Pastor D. That's right. And there's a difference between a, a concubine and a bride. See, the concubine can only be used for pleasure. But the bride is not only for pleasure, but she's there for purpose. That's right, that's right. That's good stuff. You can't walk in purpose only as a concubine. Come on, that's good stuff. I may be wrong, but I stand corrected. But I never seen in the Bible, Daniel, where a concubine was identified. No, me neither. The Bible always says uh, uh, Solomon had his wife such and such, such and such, and three hundred concubines. Three hundred. Oh, 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 three hundred. Good God. Or, or Moses or, or somebody had such and such of the wife and such and such of the wife plus the concubines there as well. You never see a concubine being identified because when you're operating in the spirit of a concubine, you don't know your identity. Uh, my, my. That's good. You only know one thing and one thing only. God, I just want God, I just want what's in your hand. Let me break it down. I just want what's in your hand, God. I really don't want to seek your heart. That's right. I just want the blessing and the pleasure that comes from uh, uh, obeying you. But I'm really not really interested in you really being father of my life. People can't even pray for five minutes without checking their social media in these days. Where's the reverence? Can God at least get five minutes of uninterrupted attention from you? Without having to check the text message and, and, and see what, how many likes I done got on Facebook. And, and see if somebody responded to me on Instagram. Or, or, or see if somebody that shared my latest post. Can you just pray to God without the phone? Come on, right now, All right, stop. He will expose you. your house quiet. No TV, no phone, and not even the kids. Y'all go outside and play with the dog. Daddy, we don't got a dog. Go play with the neighbor dog. Go find a dog. Go do something. Go watch a dog on YouTube doing flips or something. Just leave me alone. Y'all know I love the laugh. I thought we, we have a little fun when we, when we, when we, we love it, you know. But can you just sit for just 10 minutes and just meditate? And say, Father, I thank you. I know I'm not perfect, but I know I've been purposed. I know I'm small, but I know I have a future. Lord, I just come to you seeking you right now. What, what do I need to do in this season? And be willing to sit, be still and know that I am. I got so much to say. I don't even know how I let it just come out right now. We done lost that reverence from God. We, we go into prayer time, and as soon as we go in, we're looking at the clock every two minutes to see if 15 minutes done passed by. Wow, wow. And 
we want God to bless us and to do this for us and do that. God says, I don't even have all of you. And so many people, they, they, they run to prophetic conferences hoping to get a word from God. And God's saying, what you want to hear from me for? I never heard from you. Come on now. Come on now. Woo. Mm. Thank you. Because <laughs> we done got coming with God. There ain't no, there ain't, see, in the Old Testament, you can say what you want. I know we're not under the law no more. But them, them, them ladies and gentlemen, they had reverence for God. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They knew we just we just can't do this thing any kind of way. Right. There's a respect for the king. That's right. it ain't and it ain't changed. It ain't changed. It ain't changed at all. And if you want to go to your next loving God, you gotta have that covenant behavior. You gotta say, God, you are my source. You are not a resource. God, you are the priority. And it's simple. Going before God's presence, you don't got to get all deep and do all this and that. All right. Just start off with 10, 15 minutes in the morning. Mm -hmm. I say, God, I'm just trying to get better. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. What do you want to say to me through these scriptures? And increase your time after that. So I say, God's presence. God's presence. And the last point. The presence of God supersedes the presence of people. We got so many folk that need to get delivered from people. They need to get delivered from the opinions of people. They need to get delivered from the approval of people. You know what God is telling you to do, but you got the, the, the opinions and the talk of such and such in your ear, and, and you're valuing what they're saying more than what God is saying. But at the end of the day, you got to be like the disciples. We ought to obey God That's right. rather than man. John 12, 42, 43. We getting ready to get out of here. Look what it says. This is talking about when Jesus was out ministering to the people. It says, on the other hand, a considerable number from the ranks of the leaders, they did believe. They did believe in God. They did believe in they, they knew who Jesus was. They believed in but because of the Pharisees, woo, they didn't come out in the open with it. They were afraid of getting kicked out of the meeting place. <laughs> and when push came to shove, <laughs> they cared more for human approval than for God's glory. That's why I love reading this in the message version. It gives you the straight, raw, and uncut version of it. And you can understand what it is it's saying. It's saying the people care more for human approval than for God's glory. And we see a lot of that going on in the churches today. We, we trying to set up our ministries and we trying to set up programs and do this and do that and do this. And, and, and we're caring more about how the people don't feel and what they're going to say more than what God has said to do. Nowadays, they got to call it where it's called uh, uh, where it's called the seeker sensitive movement. Mm -hmm. The seeker sensitive movement. And what it is, what it is, they're saying, we're going to make we're, 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 we're going to make the church service and I'm not against it, but it says, we're going to make the church service as comfortable That's right. and as common and as non-threatening as possible. That's right. Because we want everybody to come and feel safe in our church. That's right. And nothing wrong with it. You know, bring the people in. Do what you got to do to people in. But many churches, they get out of balance in doing it because they start caring more about what the people want versus getting God's presence in the house. Let me tell you one thing right now. You don't have to try to muster up your own strength to get people in the house. If you just make sure God's presence is in the house, hey. the people will come. Because he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. No man comes to the Father unless he is drawn. So what's the use of having a 10,000 member church where ain't nobody coming to the Father or being drawn because the Father is not even in the place. 
and we're building nothing but a bunch of Maori ministries. <laughs> because God is not the Father. They building a culture where they don't even care if God even show up or not. As long as we got the fixed field, uh, uh, six field, and, and you paying them offers, you good to go. And that's why you see a lot of mess going on in the pulpit. Homosexual pastors and, 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 and leaders doing this and, and, and leaders doing that. And, and uh, every other month somebody getting exposed in ministry or, or this and that going on. And you and you going around and you got a lot of people church hurt. Uh -huh. Because the people are not, the, the leaders are not valuing God's presence more than the presence of the people. Wow. And now you have the people saying, man, them jokes ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. They live in the same way I'm living. Right. So what's so interesting about your God when your lifestyle is the same as mine? Right. But God needs a people who can be distinguished. Somebody say distinguished. distinguished. We sacrifice God's presence for people's presence. We sacrifice God's presence for people's popularity. When it comes to guest speakers, we rather bring in popular speakers and not power speakers. I don't care how many likes your face page, Facebook page got. I don't care how many followers you got on Instagram. Come on, man. Hitler even had a follower. That's right. Yeah, okay. That's right. And so did Satan. That's right. Okay. He took the third of heaven. So just because somebody got a lot of followers and they can talk loud on the microphone don't mean that they are anointed. Look, 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 look what it says. And this is the last scripture. Galatians 1, 10 through 12. Look what Paul said. He was telling the people in Galatia, he was saying, this is where he was telling people, if there is any other person that comes preaching the gospel different from what we preach, let him be a curse. <laughs> and he look what he said. He said, do you think that I speak this strongly in order to, to uh, manipulate Christ? There's a lot of manipulation going on yeah. in the church today. Yes. He said, you think I speak this strongly in order to manipulate Christ? See, you got to understand, when you listen to different people, whether online or in person, you really got to have a spirit of discernment. Because they speak in a way where they can manipulate your emotions. Because at the end of the day, after they give you what you say is a fire word, they're not going to give you a fire chance to give and a time to throw a fire seed. And then tell you, if you don't sow the seed, you're not going to be blessed. Manipulation. If you don't sow the seed, God ain't going to do what he's going to do for you. That's manipulation. Okay, if you give $100, I'll pray for you. But if you give 25 we'll just cover you in the, uh, some old way and proud. Manipulation. He said, you think I speak this strongly in order to manipulate uh, crowds? Or to carry favor with God? Or to get popular applause? He said, if my goal was popularity, <laughs> I wouldn't bother being Christ's slave. That's right. Okay. That's right. Notice, I am most emphatic, your friends. This great message I deliver to you is not mere human optimism. What Paul was telling them is that my relationship with God mm -hmm. and how I value God, I'm not doing this for popularity. That's right. Paul didn't care about who feelings he hurt? He said, I only preach Christ and Christ crucified. We have to get in a place to where we don't get so focused on people's feelings and what they want and how they want that we don't even entertain what God wants. Okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do for the people? Hold on, first of all, let's get this in order. What are we going to do for God? What do God want us to do? How do he want us to go about it? Okay, now let's get strategies on how we're going to bring in the people. Amen? Amen. So as I get ready and close, in this season we're going to the, Pastor said this is the year of excellence. We're all believing God for greater. The first thing is we got to have a, a hunger for God's presence because it's in his presence that we're going to Find and get everything that we need. That's right. The strategy to go to the next That's level. Right. God, give me the wisdom. That's right. yeah. Give me clarity right now, God. Yeah. You ain't going to get that from nobody else unless God is speaking through them. God, I, I, my family is a mess right now. Show me how we can make this thing better. You got to live in God's presence. Amen? Amen. 
Hey man, can we give God a hand clap of praise? Yeah, that's good, man. Good. Somebody, somebody hold up your Snicker bar and say, yeah, have you ate it yet? <laughs> say, hungry? Why wait? Why wait? Amen, amen. Great work. Man. Amen, amen. Awesome work. Can we just get a man of God a hand clap of praise? Can we just get God a hand clap of praise for what he has spoken in this place on today? Hey, this time I'm not going to just assume that everybody has a relationship with, with Jesus. So at this time, um, if you are believing God for something more, if you are expecting God for something more, if you are needing God for something more, First, as, as the prophet talked about, there's prerequisites in God really, and you really experiencing God. Now, the Bible.